Now, experts say many victims of abuse don't speak out, with some dying at the hands of their intimate partners. We'll talk to clinical psychologist Professor Seth Scooper in just a moment, but first, uh, just a warning that the video itself does feature some graphic content, so please do be aware of that as you continue to watch this uh, interview. Prof, thanks very much for coming into studio. Uh, I, I saw the video uh, for the first time this morning. Um, how, how did you feel watching it, just the extent of the violence in it? Uh, it's very clear that this is a brute. Um, he's doing something which he obviously has been doing before. It's not something that has just happened now. And is somebody who is uh, a, a serious uh, serial abuser mm -hmm. if uh, reports are to be believed. Yeah. I mean, a, a friend of mine actually messaged me this morning and said what struck him was the ease with which this man he slaps this woman several times. It's, it's like second nature to him. He just does it. Well, yes, he's incorporated this behavior. Uh, look, abusers, it's, it's, uh, it's a complex situation because you have uh, brutes like this. They can be very charming, yeah. the person we call narcissistic, but they can also be uh, other kinds of sociopaths who uh, are seriously wanting control uh, and want to uh, be completely in charge of the person that they are abusing. Not that the narcissist won't do that, but this kind of abuse uh, is all too familiar, it's becoming normalized in our society, and we're a country where abuse against women, against children, against the elderly, the statistics are shocking. We, you know, we hit the upper radar in terms of these stats, and we should be worried. We should actually be taking note of this, particularly when there are allegations against our leadership uh, across the board. Our church leadership, our political leadership, our business leadership, look at the, the convictions for murder by the real estate agent, all these kinds of things are there and Michelle, we need to understand we come from a very violent past. That violent past has not been seriously dealt with. It is with us, all our stats show that and we need to do something else to stem the tide of violence. Campaigns, while they are important, won't address them. There's a need for early childhood and primary school education because if you start going into high school, for instance, the socialization has almost taken full effect. Yeah. And we see the plethora of social media incidents in, in pubescent and post-pubescent children. So we need to drastically look at this problem. And it reflects in how we deal with each other in various spheres of life, not only in terms of male-female, but in terms of same-sex relationships and how we deal with them. We are a troubled nation. We have serious issues and we cannot, in the 25th year of our democracy, continue to sweep them under the carpet. It will give, and it will give in shocking incidents like this one, and in the next infanticide. Yeah. So we need to learn that this is something that is endemic. It's almost part of our psyche, if you like, because it's been transmitted in ever so many ways. And subtly. And very subtly and sometimes openly. And then you get these uh, pseudo macho guys. Behind every macho bully, you'll find an insecure, insignificant uh, individual crying to affirm himself. The only way he can do it, and usually it is a he who does it, is by this kind of brutish violence. Yeah. I mean, Prof, my next question is, is a difficult one to phrase, given the extent of what you've just described, this moment that we find ourselves in, in South Africa. Just last week, and you've mentioned it just now, uh, we saw that scathing judgment in the Jason Roder case, that uh, property mogul who uh, was convicted of murdering his wife, staging her suicide. The judge in that case describing with graphic detail how he would have staged her naked body, dragged her through her own feces. Uh, we go to the case of Teresa Temane, 
uh, this young man in the prime of his life, teenage children in the dock today for his murder, for the murder, for posting it on social media. Prof, how did we get here? I think we've had bad uh, role models. I think across the board, we confronted with such crass leadership and that when somebody emerges who gives us hope, we expect a Jesus Christ resurrection. Uh, we, we've been let down. We've been let down by the quality of our leadership, and this is across all spheres, socially, politically. The religious sector mm. is confronting itself right now and ought to show a different way. We're a troubled society. You see, on the 27th of April, when we had, uh, 1994, when we had this glorious uh, general election, what we did not deal with was the cumulative effect of our past yeah. that resurrects itself in all kinds of behavior. Now naked racism, then brute force. Our police service is ill-equipped, and I don't mean in terms of the arms they have, psychologically and intellectually to deal with themselves, let alone deal with others who bear the brunt of these cars. We are deeply wounded. We need to re-evaluate re ourselves in terms of where we are at this particular 25th year of our democracy because we can't tolerate another five months, mm -hmm. let alone 25 months of this kind of thing going on. But Professor, how is government going to lead this kind of uh, reawakening this discussion around the violent place we are in in South Africa when we are dealing as a government with so many other issues around state capture for example we're trying to keep the lights on yes uh, almost literally we, we are uh, the point is that that is part of that syndrome where we allow mediocre middling people to rise to positions where you blink and you look at somebody and that person is in a serious position of power and you wonder how the hell did they get there when we've got such bright people we've got smart people we've got people who can take this country forward but they're not being relied upon merely because they're not party hacks or they're not part of a particular faction and here we're talking only at the political level but let's look at our academic level Let's look at our business level and other spheres. We lack leadership. And when somebody finds a role model out there and more people adhere to that, that becomes uh, eye-opening for all of us because we are in a situation where the worst rises to the top and the good amongst us are just put down. So it's time for good people amongst us to claim this space, to say this is our country, we cannot leave it to mere party hacks mm. to make a mess of it. That political leadership needs help. They themselves are confronting the nightmares of the past. They haven't dealt with it themselves. And how then are they going to lead us? Because they haven't come to a place where they've recognized where they stand in terms of their past and what that visioning is for the future. So we'll hear the usual claptraps in the next few weeks as we get into May yeah. about we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And actually, where in the world do, for instance, uh, a government create jobs. They don't. They enable others to create them. So what we've done is we've taken everything and put it into the political uh, pot, expecting there will be miracles. And after Saint Mandela, we have been bereft of serious leadership. So now we're left with mere mortals amongst ourselves, and we see that they are made of material that we would not want to be led by. So the worst present themselves and the best stay away. Young people now who constitute more than 50% of the population, the majority of them are not registered to vote because they have given up. 
they're looking elsewhere. And that elsewhere can be very dangerous if they mobilize themselves in a mob situation like this Maduro gang did because they feel they need to assert themselves in some way uh, in, in a leadership cohort all misdirected because there are channels that need to be utilized for such expression but those channels don't work the things we have in our liberal democratic dispensation are simply not working for our people and we need a serious relook at all of that yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks as always, Prof, for coming into studio. Professor Saths Cooper is a clinical psychologist as we continue to uh, unpack this moment that we find ourselves in in South Africa. Uh